Thank you, Liz. Although all of a sudden now I feel really old. I, I know I wrote those <laughs> words and it made me, when somebody else read them out, it sort of made me feel really old. <laughs> um, so carry on. Did you want me to start with a question or did you want to, yeah? Yeah, I but, so. uh, I get, yeah, I guess it's an obvious question given, um, you know, the focus for this afternoon's webinar, but talk to us a little bit about how you think consumer behavior has actually changed. Well, I think, I think we all know that, that COVID-19 has, has changed the world. And as a result, a lot of um, con consumer behavior has changed, some forced and some on a voluntary basis as we have adjusted to a, a new reality and, and new lifestyles. And it's changed really quickly. And it's also, it's going to, you know, it's change is going to be ongoing. We, we, we don't know what it's going to look like in, in level two. Will we go to level two next week, level one, and even beyond that? So there's a, there's a sort of changing reality, which, you know, we've never, um, we've never faced on this kind of scale before. And what people are spending their money on um, has changed. Um, we all know that supermarket spending is up and hospitality and travel is, is down hugely. I think when we see the April figures, even, even more so. So how we're spending our money, how, you know, what we're spending our time on um, is having a huge impact on um, consumer behavior. Great. And so why, why do we need to understand? Again, this might be a, you know, look, sound like a simple and obvious question, but um, just in case, um, you know, some people aren't clear on this, why do we need to understand our customer and our client's behavior? Well, for, for a whole lot of reasons. Um, and I always find it quite interesting when it's to unpack this, but looking at things from a behavior um, change perspective gives us an, a new lens on, on what we choose to focus on through all this um, chaos and, and constant change that we've got at the moment. If you actually take it back and start looking at, at behavior, it kind of gives you something to, to ground your thinking in. And in this kind of chaos, it's good to have something to be able to sort of ground your thinking in. Um, a lot of our behavior is, is subconscious. We don't think about it. We do what's convenient and, and what's habitual. And those convenience and, and habits have been, have been broken and, and throw, thrown out. And with that comes you know, both opportunity and, and loss. Um, a lot of the assumptions and insight that our business strategies to date and a lot of business successes have, have been based on have, have changed. So looking at behavior and, and being really specific around um, being clear around what we want our customers or potential customers to do gives us a new way of looking at that kind of eternal you know, business challenge of identifying what, what, what problem we're, we're, we're looking to solve. You know, everything, everything sort of comes back to behavior. Um, if you think of it from a business point of view, we, we want our clients or our, biz, or our customers to do something, to take an action. If, if all they do is think about us, no matter how often they think about us or how fabulous they think we are, if they don't actually do something about making that real, then it's not going to have an, an impact on our, on our bottom line or our longevity. Um, we, need, we need an action and engagement from customers and clients. And that might be something really small. It might be something like wanting asking them to you know, give us a like on, on our Facebook page or to let us know when they've had a good, a good experience. Um, it might be a big sale, it might be a small sale, but it's gotta be about an action. And that focus on a behavior change means that it, we, we can sort of have a real laser focus with our business strategy and our you know, comms and comms and marketing. Um, it's all about you know, connection. Um, the more we can understand our customer's behavior, the more connection we can, we can have with them. Um, it allows us, looking at behavior allows us to test those assumptions that we've based a lot of our, um, you know, thinking on so far. And um, responding, you know, it, it's behavior change is kind of like a two-sided equation. There's got to be behavior change on the business and, and organization side as well. And that's where we, um, that's where this four approaches to change model comes in. All right, so maybe that's, um, you know, can you just share a little bit more about what you mean by the four approaches to change? Yeah. What, what are they? Absolutely, and I'll just actually f share the screen with you as well. Um, let's see if we can get that. It was fun to make it work at short notice. And here we go. So I hope everyone can see that. So. 
I always think of like there's four approaches to changing behavior and you can apply this um, approach to any kind of behavior change you want, you want, whether it's from your partner or your um, teenagers, although you might be a bit more in the control segment with teenagers. Um, so basically there's, there's four approaches to, to change and um, I'll take you through those in, a, in a, a bit more detail. So the first one, you know, is that inform quadrant and that's where we're, you know, educating, communicating, you know, advising, trying to sort of, um, persuade our, our clients to, to, part, to partake of our, of our goods and services and we do a lot of that and that's often the purpose of advertising it's about informing um, but support and design are where I think you get you get some of the better wins in terms of actually changing behavior and support is where you actually you you've defined what behavior you want from your clients or potential customers so you put some stuff in place to support that behavior change you make it easy for them to you know to order online if that's what you want to do you make it easy for them to pay if that's pay contactless if that if that's what you have to do you, you basically support them and it's based on what on what they need and want and what they value and that's changed a lot in the in the in the covid world and we'll talk about some examples of that later um, the third one is that design approach. That's where you actually make some changes to the product and service that you deliver that you that you're delivering. And we've seen a lot of that recently as well, where people have had to pivot and actually had to do you know quite a lot of um, change things around a bit. Um, the control quadrant is one that you don't often play in when you're work, talking about consumer behaviour because often we we um, we tend to be responding to you know consumer consumer desires. But in the COVID-19 world, there's, there's actually quite a lot of control at play. You've seen how um, businesses have to operate in level three and the, the changes that, that, they've, that they've, had to, um, they've had to make. So there's, you, you, tend to, you tend to actually have to, um, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I'll go back there. You tend to um, pick which one um, you end up you playing in and you might be playing in a mix of these but what I really encourage people to do is to is to not stay in the inform quadrant just to actually jump into support and design and it's just a different way of looking at at the same at the same challenge now that control that control quadrant um, that I talked about there this next slide is a really good example of a business that has had to respond to a kind of um, regulation under um, level three and there is a bar of Whitaker's chocolate for anybody who is on the webinar who can tell me exactly what that is you have to tell me the business and you have to tell me the city okay and um, yeah so as I said four approaches um, slightly different way of looking at things forces you to um, I get clients to sort of like not play in the informed space, but actually to have a look at what support and design they can put in place for their um, for their for their for their customers. So, yeah, that's the four approaches to change model. So I sorry, unmute myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess um, I guess Janet, the, the next question I've had, you know, I have is, what do you actually believe the main focus of of business strategy should be well what what looking at it from that you know taking that four approaches model and looking at it from the customers you know behavior perspective is it allows you to to look at you know that eternal question that business is always answering is you know what's that problem we're, we're looking to solve and if you pull it apart and take it down to behavior um, you have a better understanding of the reality of the of the of the customer's world and if you actually drill yourself down and keep asking yourself what do i want them to do do i want them to go online and buy something do i want them to to order something and come and you know pick it up for you know contactless pickup each of these do i want them to jump online and do some of my online yoga or online pilates courses do i want them to order a, a box of wine, each of those behaviors and has, has quite a different kind of um, set of steps. And if you look at it from the perspective of, you know, knowing, knowing what you want your customer to do, you then reverse engineer 
your business processes from that from that from that perspective and people's behavior is a lot more malleable at, at this at this moment than it is in a long time um academics talk about you know you need 30 days to change your behavior and and all that kind of thing well we've been in lockdown for i'm sure it's been more than 30 days i think it's more like 40, 46 so when people do the same thing all the time their neural pathways get quite fixed and the the more um sort of and we know this ourselves the more it becomes a habit then and the harder it is to change so people's behavior at the moment is um you know people are a lot more open to doing things um doing things in a different way yeah so what does this what does this mean for business strategy it means that you've got to look at that um you've got to look at that desired behavior that you want and you've got to um promote and increase all the incentives and rewards that go, that go with that behavior and, and take away the barriers and the roadblocks and those can be two different two quite different sides to the to the um, same equation so the key thing is to you know is to take this time and, and, you know a lot a lot of us do have some more time is to actually take a moment and be strategic around what we want to be um, what we want to be doing take take some time to review that um that, that business strategy are we are, you know are you going to be in the same business delivering the same products to the same customers Is, are, are one or more of those three elements going to change and whether it's one two or three you know the greater the number um the greater the change and the greater the, the, ch the challenge will be and I think what I'm seeing with a lot of um the, the businesses that I'm working with is everyone's I don't know if panicked is a strong is too strong a word, but people are kind of their wheels are spinning. Everything that we have, you know, everything that we know has kind of fallen apart, and we we don't really know how it's going to look, even in the in the short term or in the medium and long term. So um, everyone's you know businesses are, are spinning a bit, and you can see it in the in the marketing communications that are coming out. Everyone's kind of like trying to get everything out to everyone and hoping that that, that something will stick. So it's about really, really taking that time um, to be strategic, work out who your customers are and, and see what you can, what you can build um, that, that works, that works for them. I'm going to share the screen again here. We'll try that again. Ms. Janet, does that, guys, if you've got questions that are occurring to you, make sure, sure you're popping them into Q&A. So one of the things I said earlier on is, you know, there's a lot of panic. There's a lot of people um, try, trying everything. But what you've got to do is you've got to, you've got to try and avoid what we call in the commerce world, spraying and praying, spraying everything everywhere and hoping that something's going to stick with, with, with some customers. Um, the more focused you can be, um, the more that you can better um, hone in on, on particular um, audiences. And the more that you can um, better understand your audience, the more you can understand where your focus needs to be in terms of, you know, marketing or revising your, um, you know, your business processes or, or, or your offering. So one of the key bits of, of advice, I think, and one of the key things that becomes a bit easier when you look at things from a behavior perspective is actually that kind of that focus and avoiding what I call, um, you know, the spray a prey approach. Now, this is a picture that always sort of reminds me of my mother, because as a teenager, she always said to me, you know, it's one thing after another with you. And it probably was at the time. But um, that's what we've got to have. We've got to have one thing after another. And we've got to have a logical sequence to that one thing after another. Um, this is a chance to actually, you know, map out that customer journey and at each point, you know, look at your customer's behavior and the steps that they have to do and see what you can do to, to make it um, simpler and easier for them to, you know, to, to essentially engage with your business and buy your, buy your products, products and services. So it's, it's not one thing after another randomly, but it's one thing after another in a, in a, in a logical, in a logical um sequence i mean we're in we're in level three at the moment likely hopefully to come to level two um 
Tuesday next week. So everything's going to change again then. And just now's the time where you actually need, need to be prepping for, for what level two means. If you've been able to operate in level three, that's fantastic. If not, just now's the time where you actually need to be getting everything, um, getting everything aligned. I, it was really interesting, you know, as, as sort of we came into level three last week, how, how certain things um, didn't, didn't work. Um, and people were really, people were really um, kind of quite sort of relaxed and, and, and not worried about things that, 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 that didn't work. Everybody wanted to get out there and support the businesses that they could. But just now is the time where really you should be preparing for, we should, you know, all the businesses should be preparing for, for level two and also even, you know, level one and, and what that means, means beyond it. Um, it can be quite a discipline to force yourself to do that when we don't know exactly what it means, but it, it's just about working things through in a, in a, in a logical, um, logical way. So I will, looking at, so I want to just take some people through some practical tips. I thought that might be um, the easiest way. I can't see what's coming through the, the chats at the, at the moment, but um, some really practical things from a behavior change point of view. Um, don't confuse effort with results. Um, it, can, it can be really easy to get sucked into creating a lot of, um, you know, online content or um, to be sort of, you know, getting a lot of people into to like your Facebook or to follow your Instagram account or, or things like that. But actually, at the end of the day, if that is part of your sales strategy, then you need to be really focused on ensuring that um, that, that effort is giving you the, the results that you um, that you're looking for. And I've seen quite a lot of stuff with some businesses over the last couple of weeks where um, even the basics haven't been, haven't been, you know, haven't been sorted out. There's quite a few businesses in Wellington that I wasn't sure if they would be operating in level four or not. There was three of them. Um, and we went into level four, I, I checked with them and none of them had updated their Facebook, their website, um, or their Google listing to, to say that they were closed in, in, um, when we were in lockdown because they were, you know, they could have been defined as essential services. So, so be really clear about getting the basics right. Um, don't confuse effort with results. Be, be really, um, be really strict about evaluating everything that you do. You know, if you send out an email newsletter, you know what were the click throughs? What were the click throughs on that? You know, what level of interest did you get from those Facebook offers, those Facebook ads that you run? What's the best time of day? What's the best day that works for for those um, for those ads? You know, where are your customers coming from? I had somebody who was spending a lot of money on, on, on Google ads and before she came to me um, for some help, she'd stopped the Google ads and she was saying that her, her sales hadn't actually gone down and it turned out that most of her sales were coming from um, personal referrals. She was a florist. Um, so you've got to know where your customers are coming from because otherwise you risk spending money on things that actually aren't getting you in front of the people that you, that you need to be. And in this kind of world at the moment, you know, what's changed with you? You know, who are your current customers? Who are your best customers? What, what's changed for them? What about previous customers? You know, can you go back to them and kind of, um, you know, see, see where they're at and, and, and what, you can, what you can offer for them? Um, you know, offer them something of value, but make sure that the, that the offer is clear. I'll talk later on about an example I got of a communication, marketing communications that had seven offers in it. Um, and be generous. You know, we're all, apart from perhaps if you're in a supermarket, everybody is probably a bit apprehensive just now about what the future is going to bring. So if you, you know, be generous. If you've got something that you've, um, that you've already created that you can give away and that perhaps has, has got value to someone else, um, then, you know, then, then do that. We've seen a lot of examples of that um, over the last, um, last few weeks. If you've got a database, go through that and, and, and mine it. At some point, you know, for people to be on your database, they had a, some level of interest in your product and a service. It's much easier to engage or to sell to somebody who is already a warm contact. But be really, really clear clear on, on what you want them, what you want them to do. Be really clear around around what it is that behavior that you want them to do. Um, the objective is to, is to build a connection, and like any relationship, that takes time and effort, and you know, might go backwards and forwards. Um, and, you know, likes and follows in themselves, you know, do not automatically, you know, equal sales, you, you need to convert them. And I'll talk about a specific example of that um, uh, slightly later. Actually, we're going to come to that example 
right at this moment. And as I go to share the screen, I just want to make sure I am in no way um, encouraging these two activities to be undertaken at the same time. So can you guys see that? Yeah. So um, a few years ago, I went to a, a one day workshop at the Ice House, which was excellent workshop. And one of the one of the people speaking there was one of the brothers from um, Juicy Rentals. And he told us about a um, huge amount of business they were um, they were generating through their Facebook pages. And I, I can't remember the exact figure just now, but it was a lot. It was over a million. I think it was less than two million. And everybody ooed and ad round the room as to how, you know, you know, this, this was fantastic. But then um, Tim qu um, qualified it by saying that they had seven people in the business working full time on their, um, on their Facebook presence. And, and that's the kind of investment you need. You, you're not going to generate a huge amount of, of sales of social media without putting time and, and resources into it. The platform itself might, you know, might not have a, 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 a specific cost, but you've got to resource it well. It's, it's not going to be something that's going to um, generate you a whole lot of business on, on its own. Um, Tomato Wines is another really good example. Um, even before we went into lockdown, they had started sort of um, sending out lots of emails to their um, customer database, of which my um, husband is, is on and they had lots of offers they were making you know lots of very attractive offers with you know reduced cost for bottles of wine free delivery um and it was it worked really well in terms of actually getting um those customers who perhaps only went in once a year and, and bought some stuff in the in the vineyard as part of a holiday encouraged them to, to buy to buy product um and you know i'm sure had a, had a great increase um in their in their sales and I was looking at their I was looking at their website yesterday and I, I came across this and I thought it was an absolutely fantastic example of um, building connection and engagement they, this was only announced yesterday but um, Tomata are going to be every Friday at five o'clock great time going to be doing Instagram live tastings from um, the winery so they're going to have winemakers family members taking you behind the scenes and finding it a, a bit more about um, about the vineyard. And it's, it's not a big vineyard where you can go into a vineyard tour anyway. So this is kind of giving you a kind of exclusive behind the scenes view. And yes, they are, you know, going to be, you know, selling wine as part of it. But I think it's a really good example of um, taking your market and um, doing building a connection with your customers and off the back of that, hopefully making, um, making some more sales. We'll be all tuning in for that tomorrow. So I'm going to take you through some practice, some examples of, you know, really good um, marketing communications that, you know, have changed, have certainly changed my behavior over the last um, couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to have one example um, of which, which I think wasn't, wasn't a great example. And we'll get that out of the way, first of all. So I love the South Island. I will, any excuse to go to the South Island, it sort of reminds me of um, Scotland. As you can tell, I wasn't born in New Zealand. I've been here for about 20 years. But you know, I absolutely love the South Island. I think it's because a lot of the hills don't have trees on them, so it reminds me of Scotland. But anyway, um, I received a, a marketing email newsletter from a South Island um, tour, tourist operator when we were still in Level Four, saying um, we're going to be we're going to be operating in Level Three. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Well, that's really interesting. I wondered why they're going to be operating in Level Three more than any other. Um, uh, tourist operator so they kind of lost a bit of credibility at that point but the main thing um, and the only reason I read through the newsletter um, was because it was what I thought wasn't a great example it had um, seven offers for different seven different kinds of customers from like nine day trips to seven day trips to five day trips to three day trips to self-guided to equipment only um, and they assumed that I was an existing customer and I wasn't. I had just engaged with them and got some information from them about a year and a half ago. So what they had done there was they had gathered everything up and they had a whole lot of offers, which in themselves were quite good, but they had bundled them up and they had put them into, into one um, email, email newsletter. And, but buried, I think it was paragraph five out of seven paragraphs, I found something that I might, um, might have been interested in. So it wasn't, it wasn't a great way, it was a missed opportunity because I think in terms of um, you know, tourism are, are particularly hurting. And I think there's a real opportunity there for all of those, those of us who can't travel overseas and who go overseas for business and 
family reasons who are really keen to um, you know, do lots of to travel domestically. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there that um, I haven't necessarily seen um, a whole lot of marketing around. So that's that's the that's the negative one, and we'll we we'll get that get that out of the way. Um, so just to show that I don't drink wine all the time, um, I was ordering some kombucha online because I couldn't stand the queues in Moon Wilson. So I went on to Daily Organics and for the first time I ordered a big batch of um, the kombucha. And because there was free delivery, if you over, over, ordered over a certain amount, I ordered far more than I thought I, I needed. But they sent me this lovely card, a handwritten card saying, hello, Janet, thank you for your first line up first online order we really appreciate it and that saying thank you and building connection I think is, is really important just now because we're all trying to help each other out a little bit so I really I really appreciated that so I was very happy and then when they sent me an email saying can you please give us a review I went I absolutely jumped online and did it and then they sent me another little handwritten um, thank you note and a little gift they sent me um, that a um, little bottle of apple cider vinegar and another thank you saying thank you so much for your lovely review of our kombucha so i'm much more likely to um buy that apple cider vinegar which is about five times the price of the stuff in the supermarket because i you know i've got such a a, a sort of strong feeling of affinity now for for that brand and also because again i want to help um a business that i, I value their product so those those little things um i think make a big difference at this stage as we're trying to sort of um you know change consumer behavior in a way that's, that's positive for our own businesses and organizations um this is another one um the two sisters who set up chia seeds they were on a uh, business mentoring call i was on a couple of weeks ago and they no probably about a month ago and they talked about um how their business was just completely decimated. They'd lost something like 95% of their um, sales because they sell mainly through um, cafes and wholesale. And they had, they were desperately trying to sell products and they had put together these boxes of 12 bottles that they were selling for $45. So they, they sort of tentatively asked, you know, could people please consider buying them? And, you know, so many people did because we wanted to help out. I mean, I personally initially wasn't a great fan of the Chia drinks i just don't like chia in, in a drink but for 45 dollars, i got these 12 healthy drinks which the 19 and the 20 year olds in the household really enjoyed so i think that's the other thing it's just it's just make that ask don't don't be shy about um about asking i had a client with a yoga studio who i had to spend a long time persuading her to ask her landlord for um a rent holiday and in fact he gave her a rent holiday for a month longer than she initially asked so you, you've got to be you've got to be um got to make the ask it's 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 um you'd be surprised what what will what will come from it um there's been a couple of um this goes back to that if you've got something free that is of use to someone else maybe consider giving giving it out for free um there's been a few of these um tracing apps, but I read about Bron and what she had done with Spring Road a, a couple of days ago and I thought it'd be good to include it. And I, I asked her why she why she did it and she said that they were having to deliver and develop an app for themselves um, because they're about to open up the office. And they thought, well, if, if we've, we've done it for ourselves and if we can make it freely available to other small and medium businesses who, you know, are struggling, then it's it's a win. It's a win for everyone. It makes us feel good, gets our name out there. So that's, I think, the kind of, um, Thing that we need to consider when we're looking at you know that changing consumer consumer behavior landscape now i don't know if anyone's got the answer we can check the um questions afterwards but that is the green thing that i showed you at the beginning it is um a wellington company called good housekeeping as you can see they do um eco store refills on um cleaning products and um, they've, they, that guy um, developed that door and he put that up and that's how they are doing their um, contactless um, sales from level three onwards. I think it's a fantastic example of um, Kiwi ingenuity and I love the fact that he actually even painted it green to match the existing door frame. So if anybody got that, there's a um, bar of Whitaker's chocolate making its way to you and um, we can show you that's a Whitaker's chocolate. I'm afraid I have to con con confess that I ate the prop but I will replace it if anybody got that right. So yes that is um, so 
you know, always bring it back to, um, I always see people, always bring it back to behavior and, and, and which of those four approaches can you use to kind of better understand your, um, your um, customers and clients. Thank you.